everybody, it's Denise with one of our crafts. This is like take three. <laughs> I'm trying to get this done. Um, I don't know how I adjusted the camera yesterday. Hopefully I've got it right this time. If my dog doesn't knock over the tripod again, that's holding the little squiggly arm that holds my phone. So <laughs> um, it is kind of late. You guys are probably all in bed, but I am a night owl so I needed to get these signatures sewn so I thought this would be a good opportunity to try and um, show you guys some stuff that I do um, it is not a tutorial once again it is just a craft along um, just so you guys can kind of see my process but I did want to talk a little bit to those of you who who maybe you know um, only do sewing on fabric and have never sewed on paper or you um, sew very little on paper but you're not sure why it's not coming out correctly or those of you who are considering purchasing a, a sewing machine just so you can if you junk journal so you can sew on your pages so before I start that I like I said I want to talk a little bit about some different things that might help you so on paper a little better if you're if you've been doing this for 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 forever <laughs> this video is probably gonna be boring you to death however <laughs> there are those that that you know maybe don't have a lot of experience with it or whatever or even sewing for that matter so first thing first needles okay your needle I use um, embroidery needles because I do do a lot of embroidery, so I have a lot of them. Some people just use a normal standard needle, just an, an, an average plain needle, and that's fine too. But I will tell you, you want to use an old needle. So if you're, if you're just starting out and you got a machine, obviously you're going to use a new needle. But your best bet is to, because unlike fabric, where you know your your threads run one way and then they run another when the needle goes down through the fabric it pushes the threads apart and then it picks up the bobbin thread and and so on it doesn't it will over time dull your needle but not as quickly as paper will paper is is you know a bunch of pieces of you know processed wood essentially fined and shaved down to, and wet the process whatever process that they do use because I'm not an expert in it I do know that it's not um, woven like fabric is so you're actually poking a hole through it and you might think well a brand new sharp needle would be best every time it's gonna be a waste a huge waste of money if you use a needle a fresh needle every time if you're an avid sewer already and you probably have a ton of used needles that are have dulled don't I mean recycle them that's because the paper is going to dull your needle quickly anyways you might as well just start with a dull needle right so I use a, a 7511 embroidery needle for the majority of my sewing and when I say majority I mean when I am sewing uh, copy weight paper, 20 pound paper, um, whether it's tea, coffee, or avocado dyed, for up to 100 pound cardstock. Anything over that, it, it depends on the, the make of the paper. And the reason why I say that is 110 pound paper, the process might be different between two different brands. So you might have no problem with an ordinary needle getting through it but another type might not be so easy and then when you're dealing with cardstock that have may have um, like some metal or not metal but like gold leaf or something like that or some sort of metallic over it or through it you might want to use a heavier needle so for that I use a leather needle all right and it is a 7511 but these are uh, for like an embroidery machine but they're intended to use for like heavier denim um, all the way up through leather on these and they are a much thicker needle here let me show you uh, let's see 
it's a thick needle. Whereas the standard needle that I use, and it, it, there's so many different brands. There's, what is it, Schmitz is a very popular brand. Um, I use Oregon only because when I bought my embroidery machine, I got an awesome deal and I bought like thousands of them. So I have tons of needles. <laughs> But the gold one is the standard embroidery needle that I use. And then you can see, hopefully, the difference in the thickness of the needle. So this one will go through uh, thicker, you know, all the way through leather. So, and I've, I have embroidered on leather. And I have never had a problem with them. So, and if you're not sure, you can always go to Joann's and ask there. I know sometimes not everybody is that knowledgeable about it. If you're concerned, go online and do a search for your machine and just look for, you know, the standard needle used for cotton fabric, okay? And, um, or go to a sewing machine shop if you have one close by and ask them. And they may not sell your brand there, but they may be able to suggest a, a fairly decent needle. And you can tell them, I'm, I'm sewing on paper. I'm not doing fabric. So I need something that is, you know, for just ordinary paper, and they should be able to help you out. Another thing I want to talk about is setting your tensions. Every machine is different, all right? I have a Baby Lock Elagio. It is, as you can see, probably down here. Um, this is my sewing table, and it sits in like a hydraulic lift. So um, mine is like an all-in-one. It does both normal sewing and... It does some decorative stitching and it does embroidery and every machine like I said is different with how it some machines newer machines have an auto tension setting if you have one of those machines oh I envy you because I would love to not have to deal with setting my tension every time I want to go between paper and fabric if you have an older, older machine, you may have to fiddle with it for a bit. The best thing I can tell you is if you use your owner's manual, if there's a wealth of information in there, use it, read it and use it. If you're not sure or you don't have one, go online and search for your machine brand and model. A lot of times the manufacturer has digitized their owner's manuals and put them on PDF. So you can download it and you will have it for your machine. Or simply just ask around. Some people may have one that is the same brand, but not, maybe not the same model. But a lot of times with the brands, they're very similar between how to set the tensions on it. So to sit here and show you, this is how you do it. My machine is going to be different than, you know, other machines out there. So what I tell you may not be correct for your machine. But it is important to set your tension and if you like that rugged you know stitch or the messed up stitch that's great go with it all i'm doing is just trying to help you if you've never sewn on paper before or you've done very little and you don't understand why something is happening that this may be a fix for it so like say for instance you're sewing and you're you can't understand why the bottom underneath of your paper when you flip it over it all gathers up and it looks like a big old bird's nest back there. It's because your tension is not set correctly. Normally when it's the underneath of it, um, if your needle tension, was, which is your upper tension, typically you have a knob in the front that you would turn to do your needle tension. Or like on mine, I have an LCD, I can set the tension manually with my um, on the LCD itself. Um, normally, if your thread is breaking often, it's your needle tension. If the bottom thread comes up through and it shows through the top, which is the right side, normally it's your needle tension. Sometimes it can be your bobbin, um, but for the most part, it's your needle tension. If you're missing stitches, it could be your needle tension. It can also be your bobbin tension, so you may have to fiddle with that a little bit. If your thread loop um, if your thread if the top thread shows more predominantly on the bottom it is your bobbin tension that you will need to set try to set 
uh, try to adjust your needle tension first, and if it still does it, you will need to uh, adjust your bobbin tension, which normally, you may have a button also in the front for that, but on the newer machines, it's normally located in the back behind the machine. There's a big knob with numbers on it, and that will set your bobbin tension. Also, if your thread loops or you get the birds nesting underneath, that is your bobbin tension. If you are unsure, I can tell you now, don't plug and play with, if, if you're making a journal to sell it, don't just plug in your machine and just go. Test it with some scraps, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do now, is, um, you know, is to practice and experiment with what happens if. Okay, so I've, I've pulled out some different, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. That's the one thing about doing it this way with my phone is I got to be very, uh, <laughs> very aware that the camera is there. Test different types of papers because each paper I have found, I know that with copy paper and composition paper and even my hammer mill, which is a 60 pound paper, it is really slick and I have to kind of hold it to make sure I don't, I don't push or, or force my paper but I do have to sometimes guide it to keep it straight because it, it's, it is so slick that my bottom feeders, my grippers down here, don't want to pick it up and move it appropriately. So that's why it's always best to test it. The great thing about testing is even though you messed up on, on, on the zigzag stitch or, or you might have got some bird nesting or whatever, you can use those scraps to collage or to make fabric clusters with. Or even to you know to line something because you you might glue the back of it and you won't even see oops sorry I'm bumping it again you won't even see the um, the birds nesting on the back so don't sweat it it's okay it's a learning process I don't know why I keep what I am hitting that keeps jiggling the, the camera I'm sorry also if you're going to sew collages together that you have glued Try to be mindful of where you place your glue because when you sew and your needle goes down through that, even though the, the glue may be fairly dry or dry, if you use Fabri-Tac, that glue kind of dries a little gummy. So you're going to get gum buildup on your needle and it can damage or even you know, cause the threads not to loop or, or catch appropriately. So be careful about that. If you s glue something and you realize later, oh, I really want to sew it. It would look so pretty. So be careful. Just go slow with it and watch, watch to make sure that you're not getting stuff gummed up, you know, on your needle. If you do, just take it very slow and, you know, maybe stop every once in a while, lift the needle up, Keep your paper in place and take a baby wipe and just see if you can wipe off some of the gum on there. That's what I would suggest. If you use a harder glue, be per be aware that if your glue hardens, you might experience your needle bending or even breakage a lot because the, the, the glue is so hard that when it's going through, it's just breaking. And that's a possibility too. So just keep that in mind. Go slow. And don't, a lot of people's mistake, and I did it when I first started quilting, I wanted to watch my needle. <laughs> Where's, well, watching my needle go up and down. Don't watch your needle. Watch where your paper is going and watch, you know, how it's guiding through. The needle will go back and forth the way it's supposed to, okay? That's what the machine is, is intended to do. It will do its job. You just need to help guide it. Don't force or push it. Just use your fingers as a light guide, you know, just to kind of feed it. It's kind of like stroking it. That's all it is. Let's play around a little bit. And I just kind of want to show you. Ooh, ooh, see, I keep bumping this camera. Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can readjust a little. I figured it out. I had my tripod was just on the edge of my table. And every time I wiggled or moved or whatever, it was just wiggling the thing. <laughs> it was wiggling the, the camera. So, all right. So... Um, let's try a straight stitch, okay? Now, my machine, you can backstitch using whatever. My machine, I can do a backstitch. My machine does like an, uh, a locking pickup stitch, so I don't have to do that 
and it's it's all up to you some people just start they don't even back stitch they just go and it that's fine whatever you want to do so just make sure you this is coffee paper coffee stained paper or tea stained paper so see let your machine do what it needs to do and just use your finger kind of as a guide when you turn make sure your needle is in the down position if you do it when it's up you won't get it's going to be very hard to find that hole again and put it right back in the hole most machines when you let your foot off the foot pedal will go into the down position now my machine has a little button that that um, I can push that allows the needle to go up and down if you don't have that feature or you have an older machine you will have a big spinning wheel on the side typically on the right side of your sewing machine that is where your needle go that's you know where the pulleys and the belts pull the needle up and down and it spins that wheel you can turn it like this see I'm turning mine and it will come up if you don't have an up and down that's all you have to do is spin it so and typically you spin it away from you so if you were actually looking at it it would be clockwise okay and then pulling it towards you which would be counterclockwise we'll put it back down okay so then lift your foot and just turn it and then just let it go and play with the stitch size on mine I just have mine set at four millimeters my my machine is a it is an Elagio it does have inches or something but I never set it that way I, I it didn't matter to me <laughs> now I have set mine at a different tension just so I can show you guys how to adjust the tension a little bit and mine has an auto cutter which is wonderful because I don't have to pull it out and clip it now if you do it's not a big deal just lift your foot pull your needle up in the up position because when it's in the up position it releases the tension of the thread if it's in here let me show you my foot is down okay let me pull it out okay my foot is down I can't pull it I pull it up it releases tension now if I put my needle down I can still pull it a little bit but only to a certain point so pull your needle up Pull your foot up and you should be able to pull it out to cut it okay hopefully that helps and most of you probably already know this but as you can see some the stitching on the bottom okay is coming through the bottom now remember what I said about the stitching coming through the bottom right if the bottom thread shows on the top it's your needle tension if the thread um, if the top thread shows on the bottom, it's the bobbin tension. The bobbin tension is probably either set too high or too low. Now, see, mine has a has that pickup stitch, and I can just pull that, you know, stitch. But what it does is it wraps the stitch in there so that it doesn't, it's not all over the place, okay? And that's what my machine does. It's not, um, it's not bird nesting. That's actually what the stitch is supposed to do. It just kind of it's like a tuck spit tuck stitch <laughs> all right so if I adjust my bobbin tension a little bit lower let's see what happens I think it's too low because it doesn't want to it doesn't want to pick it up see how it, it bunched my stitches here okay so I'm gonna go back to a normal and see what happens
Okay, so much better stitching. I still have some, some pull through, but that's just, now this tells me, because I've adjusted it and I've put it back to the normal range, chances are it is my upper needle tension. So I can play with it, l lessen it a little bit, see what happens, and do all that stuff. So, But for the most part, it's not too bad. So let's say I want to do a zigzag stitch, okay? So let's put this paper over here. And I'm going to show you how to do zigzag stitch. And I'm going to use this um, hammer mill copy paper. And you guys have probably seen the pattern on this because this is like this. I use the hammer mill as, I love the hammer mill. It, it is a, a cover paper, so it's a little bit thicker, but it's not quite as heavy as cardstock. And it's very nice and it's very soft, okay? Very sleek. But... <laughs> it's a booger to, to sew through sometimes. So I have to kind of guide it a little bit, but I'm not going to force it. So I want to go to a zigzag stitch. All right. And I'm going to show you guys, there's two ways to do your corners on zigzag stitch. There's no right or there no, there's no wrong. You will see most people will do what looks like an M, okay, which is the first one I'm going to show you. But I'm going to show you also that if you accidentally go to the other side, and you turn, it's not a big deal because you can make it symmetrical all the way if you just do the same thing all the way around. It doesn't matter, it's not It's not an exact science. It is after all a junk journal, right? Now notice, I'm gonna go a little slower with this one and I'm not pushing, I'm just allowing it to feed, but I'm just helping it, I'm gonna help guide it. Now, if I want the M, I need my needle to be on the left side, okay? Always on the left. And then, needle down, I'm going to turn and then keep stitching. And as you can see, I'm just using my fingers to help guide it because it is slippery. Even my fingers are slipping on it. Okay, left side. Mm -hmm. I do one more. And see, sometimes it goes a little further. That's okay. I'm just gonna go like this. And that's what I use my fingers for is to guide it, straighten it back out. And you're not, every starting point and every ending point, it's, the more you sew, the more you'll get where you need to do your turns and stuff like that. And you'll get them to meet. It's okay if it doesn't meet. Really, it is. It's okay if it doesn't meet. But here you can see, uh, let's see if you can get a closer view. That might be better there. Where the M is. And that is turning your needle in the zigzag position, position when it is to the left. Okay. Now, what if I make a mistake and do it to the right? Let me show you what happens and what you end up with there. And I'm just holding it up in the back and letting just letting it flow through my fingers. Okay, so now it's on the, the right-hand side. Okay, right-hand side.
and the more you practice with the, your machine, the more you'll understand and get a better feel for it. Okay, right hand side. And it is like with any crafting tool, practice, 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 you'll get a better understanding of the tool and what you, the capabilities. Now see this, it kind of gives like a little star effect. It still has an M in there. It just kind of gives like a little, almost like a star or a little triangle on the top corner. Still pretty. Still pretty. No mistake, right? So even if you do one corner right and the other one, it, it still comes out looking very, very, very pretty. And the great thing is now I have, I can cut this and now I have two pieces that I can use maybe as a card or, and you know, put something else on there and it's already sewn, right? And I did it just to practice with. Okay, so what if I want, uh, let's see. To use something that's a little more fragile, so I'm gonna sh I'm going to lower my bobbin tension a little bit because this is a more fragile piece of paper, and I'm gonna go slow. And the reason why I'm gonna go slow is if I go too fast, there's a good possibility because normally with this. I would lower I would use a smaller needle I would typically just to keep not to take the chance of it ripping but I just kind of want to show you that you can do it you just got to take your time and just watch what it does I would typically use like an eight on this See, it's not too bad. Eh, the holes might be a little big, but that's okay. Just take your time. It doesn't always come to the exact, but it's very close. See, now, like I said, the holes are a little big on it, and chances are, what I would normally do is go to a smaller needle for finer papers like this, especially these older vintage papers. But there you go, I've got another scrap of piece of music paper that's sewn. So, let's say I want to. Um, so on some parchment, right? Okay, parchment is very thin. It's kind of like wax paper or, you know, vellum. It's very, very thin. So I'm going to have to readjust all my settings for the most part to make sure. And I'm going to test it. That's all I'm going to do is just test to see how well my needle, you know, will go through it. Now I do know typically when I do parchment, I do change it again to an 8. It's a much finer, it's like the music paper, it's a much finer um, uh, paper, so, uh, you know, I need a smaller needle. So, let's see how well it did on um, just the normal settings. Not too bad, but I can see that it's, you know, it's pulling a little bit here and there. So I would just, of course, make some adjustments. That's that's all it is. It's just playing and making adjustments. If you like that, that 
great. I mean, I've done journals where, you know, it's like, okay, I want it to look a little messy, a little vintagey, old, like it's pulled through the paper, and it's, you know, over time, it's, it's pulled. It's stressed the paper. That's cool. Uh, one thing I will say, and I don't know if you notice, but because this is thin paper, it gives bigger pulls, okay? On normal paper, my needle is still fairly uh, newer. It's a newer, it's a used needle. It's dull, but it's a newer. I just replaced it earlier today, so it's fairly new. Um, but when you get that on normal paper where you get the big gaping holes, it's time to just discard your needle and put a new dull one in or a new one. If, if that's all you're going to do, sew paper, put a new one in. Um, and use it until it just does that. I mean, that's how I tell that my 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 needle is getting dull is the, the holes in there start getting much, you're gonna have holes in the paper when you sew it, but they're gonna get much, much larger uh, when you, when the, the needle has just had it, when it's it's ready to go, when it's, it's served its life function. <laughs> it's time to get rid of it and put another one in there. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sew some signatures. I'm not going to sew all of them. I'm just going to show you a couple little things that I do, and I will fast forward. All right, so I'll be right back, and we'll start sewing some signatures. Okay. Well, hopefully this view's a little bit better. I hope. I don't know. And we'll see. All right, typically when I work with my signatures, I start from the middle, my center signature, outward. I don't know why. I think it's just so that I, I don't lose my place with the signature itself. Got um, this um, Janet Marsh, and it is a heavier piece of paper. I think I might want to add a little bit of lace. So let me see. They're going to be enough here for two. Just trying to see if I've got enough here for two pages. I do, just barely. <laughs> so I think I want it to go this way. And I want it hanging out just a little bit. So let me measure and cut it. All right, and then I'm going to zigzag stitch, but I'm going to use a shorter stitch. And some people glue or tack it on. Some people use a paper clip. Um, I am not. And I just want it to pick up on the edge. So I'm going to go real slow so I can make sure it, it adheres and it doesn't go off the page. My fingers are just are just holding it in place. They're not pushing, they're not doing anything. I'm letting the machine do all the work for me. And I am gonna zigzag stitch all the way around. What I'm going to do is zigzag stitch my um, trim on there, and then I'll just do it straight across. Same size, okay? Same size. Right, 
and it's not hard to do you know it takes a, just a little practice and you'll get the hang of it practice with just straight um, just stitching and then take some little scrappies or something and stitch them on there because it's not like they're gonna go to waste you can always collage them or use them as um, scrappy clusters you know I hope this view is better I should have done this to begin with so I apologize I may try to redo the first part again just so you guys can see a little better because I think I have my hand in the way too much on the other one. Let me tell you that feature is an awesome feature because I don't have to pull it out and clip it and and do all that I, like I do with my other one. My other one's just a basic, I think I got it at Walmart, Singer, or maybe it was Joann's or something when they had a sale. So, now I'm gonna do zigzag, I, I did my zigzag stitch, right? And um, I didn't turn the corners on it. So what I'm gonna do is try and pick up, if I can, as close as possible to where uh, the stitch on the edge is. So. All right, so that's my first one done. And I only got like nine more to go, right? <laughs> okay, so let me pull out some more laces and see what else I might wanna do and I'll just be right back. Okay, so some pages I don't always sew because sometimes I just think that they just, you know, some people like completely naked papers. They don't want any sewing on them that's their thing and that's great I like a little texture because because it kind of does it gives a little texture not to say that naked pages are not beautiful because they are because they're very clean and fresh and crisp and sometimes it's nice to have one or two in there that are so um, I think let's see I think I'm gonna leave this one on the side because it's graph paper. And then these are the pages that I printed from Nick the Booksmith on tea stained paper. And they did, they came out, they used very little ink and they came out beautiful. So, all right, I think what I want on this one is maybe a little decorative stitch. Okay, I think I'm going to do some bows. All right.
I ain't going to let you guys go because I've got a lot of signatures to get done. So, <laughs> But thanks for hanging out. Hopefully you guys learned a little something. I'm sorry if it was boring for you. Hopefully, like I said, you guys learned something from it. And I'll see you guys next time. We're, I think we're going to do some tuck spots, but we might do make some Franken paper to make all that kind of stuff. So do some collaging. I want to practice on that. So, all right, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.